Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily talk. Um, today is number 433, episode 433 I guess you would call it. And the topic today is self-love really is a powerful key to attract love. And you may wonder about this, how this relates to relationship, I will explain. So before I jump into that, let me introduce myself formally. My name is Barry Selby, I am a best-selling author speaker and relationship attraction expert and help strong successful women find balance in love, life and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine and every day I do these talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart and today we've got to number 433. So there's quite a few. Um, and it's funny because I'm, and by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, listen to it on iTunes, it starts as Facebook Live and I was actually on a Facebook earlier and saw a memory from last year which was like number 70 or something in my broadcast so it's just funny to see the year round like the loop now of where I'm now on 433 when you know anyway so um, <laughs> the topic at hand is um, self-love is a powerful key to attract love and in particular since the topics I talk about usually are about relationship centric conversations I want to just drop a little um, few insights and the reason why I'm talking about this now is because I'm in the finishing touches on a much more comprehensive than I planned self-love practice. I've given out this assignment over Facebook Live before but I've made, now made it to more of a hands-on both um, printed and also audio guided process for self-love in the mirror. So that's why it's on my mind right now because I've been working on the editing of that last couple of days and probably going to release it at this rate, maybe even tomorrow, depending on how quickly I get it done. So keep an eye out for that. So speaking to the topic at hand, and I've spoken about this yesterday and the day before about looking for love. Well, yesterday I talked about um, the key to success after a breakup in dating, about how it's, it's wise to go to do the inner work first before you dive into the relationship. And this is one of the major keys. So in a way it ties together with yesterday's broadcast. And there's another broadcast I did a few days ago about um, that was in a similar path about how it, it's so tempting, so tempting, to go seek out somebody else to make you feel better and have them love you enough to make you feel okay. Which is like doing drugs. You're never going to be whole, never going to be full, but you will for a temporary period of time feel okay because they're loving you enough for that to happen. But when they leave, or when they get distracted, or when they do something else, and the loving goes away for a second, you'll feel like a drug, you'll feel like a drug addict, addict on withdrawal. And I'm painting this picture intentionally to get your attention. Self-love is a, I wouldn't say necessarily a power, actually I'm realizing I'm saying I'm going to change it now, not so much a powerful key to attract love, it's really a fundamental requirement to have a healthy relationship with anybody. So this actually transcends just romantic relationships. It actually will um, influence your personal relationships. It'll, in it'll influence your family relationships, your social relationships, your business relationships. So basically, to put it bluntly, to be very blunt, just make sure I'm getting, there we go, okay. Um, to put it bluntly, the fact that you are, um, how can I say this, Every relationship you have, everywhere on the planet, is absolutely um, influenced, that's a good word, influenced, by the manner of love you have for yourself. For example, if you had a tempestuous, um, traumatic relationship with your parents, it may be very hard for you to feel comfortable around them because of the stuff they did or didn't do to you. Now, I'm not talking about you in particular, but other people you might know. Because of that, you may not have a great deal of self-love when you're in that environment. So, this is, this is curable, by the way, <laughs> let's put it in simple terms. That you can, in fact, find ways to love yourself enough so that even the influence of your parents, and these are the big ones in the sense of the impact of your life from, um, on a love level, that by loving yourself enough, you can actually grow through any... Um, Wounds, history, beliefs, programming, imprinting, experiences from the past that are still impacting you. So, I'm going to say I went into the biggest one first, didn't I? Okay, so that's the big one. On a lighter level, 
<laughs> when I to level two, you can actually find that by doing self-love practices, you'll change all your friendships too. Because the thing about self-love is it, re it tends to remove or eradicate that neediness that shows up when you feel like you have to get something from other people, whether it's friends, family, relationship, business, any of those things. So the more that you are in a place of self-love, and I mean this from a place of being um, compassionate with yourself, of being, um, I can say this, present with and supportive of yourself, and I mean this from a really heart-based place. I'm not talking about like um, being a dick, <laughs> or being ego-driven, or being selfish, or being in a way narcissistic, although not the traditional narcissistic way, but the selfie narcissistic trend that's happening a lot. When you're so full of yourself, that's probably the way of putting it, where your ego is almost pulling out, flowing out the bottom top of your head because you're so full of yourself, that's not what I mean. Hi Justina, good to see you. Nice to say hi. It's absolutely a different paradigm what I'm talking about. What I'm speaking about is where you fill up from the inside up and inside out. And what you're doing literally, well energetically, is you're filling yourself up like you're filling up a bottle. So it is full of love for yourself. So that when you're around other people, you don't need anything from them. You're a full container, you're whole. And that wholeness becomes one, becomes attractive, which you want to get to at the beginning. So it attracts people to you, including romantic relationships, but also friendships and also collaborations and other things too. You'll be finding yourself getting a lot of positive attention from people who are looking at you going, wow, that person's really cool. But it's not from a place of like, yeah, look at me, I'm really cool, like ego-driven. It's because you are whole. I should say, excuse me, because we're all whole, but you're exemplifying what wholeness looks like and feels like because you'll be whole by loving yourself. Good key to have. Another part of that is the paradigm of a romantic relationship because we in this world love to be in romantic relationships, at least most of us do. And the challenge and the dance of the romantic relationship is we tend to fall into the... Um, I wouldn't say the trap, but certainly the habit of feeling that the other person's there for us and it's their job to make us feel whole, or feel great, or feel wonderful, or feel loved, or feel appreciated, whatever that is. Yes, it's nice to have that, but if you're dependent upon that, as in co-dependent, at some point in time you're going to be hurt. That's the way it goes. So you've got a choice. The choice becomes, do you love yourself enough to not need that? Because it sounds like if you do that, you won't need to be in a relationship. I don't mean that. But neediness from the place of the other person has to fulfill you all the time is a very draining experience for the other person. And it's a very um, empty experience for yourself. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's like being a drug addict. Being a drug addict, the drug being love, that you are so addicted that you keep getting your fix from whoever you'll get it from, your partner, friends, parents. But as soon as it goes away, you have withdrawal symptoms. And I'm making this point again because I want you to get how clear this is, that when you're in a place of lacking love for yourself and you want to get love from other people, it's, it can be that ugly to other people. I, from personal experience, I've been on the receiving end of attentions from other people, women, where I, I felt such, and, I'm, and I'm, not, I'm not to put anybody down, I'm just saying the experience I had. In a couple of instances where women who were interested in me, because I'm you know eligible bachelor, <laughs> But they were coming from a very limited place, a very needy place, because they've been seeing my work and they see me presenting myself as I am. And to be honest, I was repelled and repulsed by their energy because it was so, um, I'm trying to find a good analogy because it wasn't pretty. It was ugly, the energy was. They weren't, but the energy made them appear that way to me. And that is the thing you don't want to have. So I'm not sure you get this message clear. Because I'm noticing now, instead of saying that, that self-love is a powerful key, I would say perhaps self-love is the most, pow the most powerful key to attract love. Hmm, I may change the title. Because that's what it feels like. It really is a powerful place to be because when you love yourself fully, when you really do, excuse me, itchy nose, when you do love yourself fully, your ability to love for a start is effervescent because you have plenty of love for yourself to give more over if you wish to. Secondly, is your ability to attract love is easy because you don't need it. Key one of the things about attracting is you attract from a place of being okay, not attracting from, you can't attract from a place of need. As convoluted as that sounds, when you need something, you generally don't get it. And if you look at your own life, you'll probably see that. But when you're actually ambivalent and you're okay with it and you just want it, like you say, 
of welcome that into my life but not attached to it, it shows up more easily when you don't need it. Same is true for loving your relationship. The more that you're in love with yourself, the more that you're a whole. Um, hang on one second, let me finish my thought and I'll come back to that. That when you're in a place where you are um, centered and loving yourself, then it invites more in versus trying to pull it in. And that's the difference. So just need this question, when you mentioned those people had ugly energy, what does that feel like? What does it look like? That's the thing, it didn't look like anything necessarily. It felt bad. I felt this cloying, almost sickly sweet energetic that wasn't pretty. And I'm, I'm using these changeable words, but I'm really talking about the feeling level more than the actual experience. Because, I mean, if anything, I mean, the memory, okay, the memory I have of one of the women in particular, and it's not what she looked like, it's the way I tend to visual in my head because of the way it felt, I put a visual overlay on her. So let me be clear, it's not how she looked, how I portrayed in my mind because of the energy I felt from her was a level of an energy of an old crone. Almost like one of those, um, like, the, like the Witch of Snow White, that, that um, craving energy of pulling. Now again, she didn't look like that, but the feeling I had made it feel like that. And it was certainly unpleasant. And I know to be totally transparent, there are women out there in the world who experience me the same way, just to be clear. I definitely have come from a place of lack many times in the past. <laughs> More times than I wish to count. Where I was in a place of neediness, and so I would be attempting in my clumsy way back then, or the, the naivete, the innocence of the time, <laughs> where I would be uh, chasing after these women, and um, they would be repelled. And I had no idea at the time what was going on. So you now in hindsight, I see exactly what was going on. I didn't know that I could fill my own tank up. I was under the programming and the wiring back then that I needed somebody else to fill up the tank. And it's not their job, it's mine. So Justina was saying, oh wow, too. Um, said sickly sweet. Yeah, it, had, it was a cloying energy. Because it was almost like, um, I don't know if the right word for it actually, but the energy of someone being needy it really, it really, frankly, it really is a sense like a drug addict looking for a fix. Because that neediness is so, in some ways, now looking back at it, repugnant. Because it is not from a place of wholeness. It's from a place of weakness and a place of emptiness. And somehow they feel, and because imagine if somebody came up to you and wanted to suck your energy dry to fill them up, which is what narcissists do, actually, their skill set. In a way, when the person is not loving themselves, they're looking for love from you. It's kind of like that, to a different degree, not, not as extreme as that. So in a way, it's like a spectrum. I'm, really, I'm defining the DSM-5 right now, okay, interesting. There is a spectrum where basically when you're not loving yourself, you can come across as needy. The high end of that, the extreme of that, not saying you become that, but it's certainly a, bit, a similar trait at a much higher level, which is how narcissists act, because they come from a place of need, but they don't present that way. They're very good at presenting a certain an aura, and then they get into a relationship, and then they'll be basically like energy vampires sucking you dry, to survive and thrive, but they're using your energy to do it. And when someone doesn't love themselves, it has a similar resonance, not the same extreme and not the, not the definition. So don't please not assume that you're a narcissist because you don't love yourself, because that's not true. Very careful what I say here. However, if you're out of practice with loving yourself, or you never raise the idea of loving yourself, or you feel like you need to love yourself, um, then this will be useful to you. So I'll get to that in a second. Um, Justina, sorry makes sense yes that is exhausting exactly it's ex actually I would say it's pretty exhausting on both sides in fact looking back at my own life when I was doing it, yes it's exhausting on both sides to be the recipient of somebody who's looking for that from you it's like they're draining your own energy it's kind of like you want to run away fast because otherwise you'll be sucked in and you'll be drained completely so as that's exhausting on the other side when I was say many years younger when I was doing it to other women where I was needing and wanting and it wasn't attractive very clearly looking back I'm kind of embarrassed to say but I realized that also it was very draining for me too because I was, running, I was running on empty. See, this is the thing. When you are truly loving yourself, and I mean it from the place of heart level, not ego level, where you're loving who you are and appreciating who you are and, and do the practice to love yourself, which I'll talk about in a second, what happens is you fill up your own tanks. So you're actually running on full, not empty, which means it's not exhausting. In fact, it's fulfilling. So you can actually give because what happens is the more you're doing the self-love practice, you can start loving other people, like friends, family, clients, relationship, in a way that basically is never going to drain you because you're coming from an overflow. That's the power of this. It doesn't, it doesn't end unless you cut it off yourself. 
so the lesson here, the reminder here, is the more you love yourself, the more you can give and receive love. But the less you love yourself, the harder it is to get it in. It really is, it really is inverse or inverted, it's convoluted. So this, um, reminder could change your life so quick quick nudge on this as I said I'm, I'm finishing up the last the finishing touch as well it seems to be that way of a soft love um, mirror meditation practice it's a right now it's become a five section workbook and an audio so it's going to become available probably in the next couple of days so keep stay tuned and watch from my announcements on Facebook I don't, I don't have it ready yet I have a page ready but I'm not ready to show it yet um, keep in touch and watch my Facebook page. It'll be announced there. And if you're on my email list, you'll get a notification in a couple of days. So if you want to join my email list, by the way, I haven't done that for a while, um, two ways. One, if you want help in the area of relationship, if you sign up for a discovery session, you can sign up right there to give me a, join my email list as well. If you go to barrysober.com forward slash chat, you can sign up for a discovery session, conversation, and I can help you get some action steps where you want to move forward and also see if we want to work together. Again, it's barrysober.com forward slash chat. So that's my discovery session. Or if you go to my website, which is my, again, my name, barryselby.com, and on the first page you land on is the video series. You can sign up for the video series for free. And right there, you can sign up for the email list there. So either way, you can get on my email list. So you'll be notified about the self-love practice, which will be coming out in the next few days. Um, I will probably do a Facebook Live about it when it comes out. But I wanted to talk about it today because it's on my mind. And I hope this has been of use to you because this, um, this lesson, this teaching, as a principle, it's a life changer, a game changer, and a relationship changer. And as a practice, it will actually level up your life in a whole other way. Now, there are many different ways of self-love practices. I'm just, I'm just providing one in my new program. Program, it's not a program, it's a practice. But it will get you going. So, your homework, should you choose to accept, is to learn ways to love yourself more than you have before. If you want to use my program when it comes out, feel free to do that. Excuse me, my practice when it comes out. It's not a program, it's smaller, it's a practice. It's fancy words. And if you are, um, if you have other ways to do it, do that. The main thing I want to remind you is that if you love yourself more, you'll attract more love. That's a formula that works. Okay? Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, the work, by the way, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. This is my daily service to give advice, information, support, inspiration. Uh, message from the masculine to inspire the feminine heart is the title of these broadcasts number 433 is today these you can find on my business page on Facebook which is where I put them after I've finished doing them on my personal page so that's Barry Selby author on Facebook they also get put repurposed onto YouTube so you can watch them there I've got a whole library on the on uh, YouTube which is messages for the masculine is the playlist and Barry Selby is my channel so you can find them there and I'm building out my library on iTunes so I have a podcast on iTunes called messages for the masculine we can sign up right there to get them and subscribe. I'm adding about 10 a week. Um, so catching up slowly. It'll take a while. But you can get those there. And if you're driving around, you can't watch, my, watch the screen. You can listen to my podcast and listen to them back to back to back if you wish. Um, that is it. You know where to find me. You know how to reach out if you want help. Um, you know what to do. Let's take care of yourself, of course. And with that, I will see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.